How many are you on? 16, okay. Holding up well that far in. He's just gonna get more and more frustrated as well as he takes them. Okay, it's not just all to the face as well. Yeah, fourth in said he knows what to do, knows how to take them at least. Hey, at least they're all having fun. It just becomes embarrassing for this guy as well, doesn't it though? Becomes embarrassing for draw. Although he might get some respect. <laughs> No resistance, yeah, he's rolling with the punches. He's gotta be careful not to get knocked out though. I guess because he's redirecting the hits, rolling with the punches is okay. Yeah, they are still doing plenty of damage. Aina just has to watch. Hmm. Using your voice, fighting with your voice is the first method, right? That's what I would assume. Just enduring, okay. Being able to endure so much pain. Oh, yeah, Elmer and Sneak are just watching. They can't quite see what's happening, though. Oh, don't interrupt. Yeah, he's asked for this. Oh, that distracted Forfin enough, though. Yeah. Damn, you're trying to help Sneak, but you made it worse. What number is that? A third of the way there, wow. <laughs> Omer's still staying behind though. Snake and I know run in. <laughs> Got explain the whole thing he asked for this. <laughs> The thing is, will they even keep that promise? I don't know. That's not a guarantee. But I feel like they'll respect him so much for it. It's not even about that, though, is it? I don't know. It's just him talking to Canute. I didn't really get the opportunity to talk. No. It's about saying the right things as well. Kittil might not have said the right thing. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, he's still going. Don't distribute the winnings yet. I'm <laughs> not done yet. Oh, the music. Yes. <laughs> Bring it on, yeah. Oh, I love the voice. Mm. Wow. No, he's got to do this. Hmm, <gasps> bit of time passing. What are we on? <sighs> yeah, the enjoyment stops now at this point. <sighs> He's still standing as well. Mm. 
I mean, yes, the hits are getting weaker as well. It's time. It sounds on the verge of tears. Oma, yeah, Oma's reaction to it all. <laughs> He's earned the respect, definitely. Oh. A true warrior, yeah. Oh, it's so swollen, yeah. Oh, just got chills. He doesn't want to resort to violence, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they have no reason to hate each other here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, that hit Oma. Ketiru to Oheka ga nefa to furu ka. Maybe they will actually. Sore wo shingen shite miru to ii. Oheka to te kononde ikusa wo nasatte iru wake de wa nai. Yeah, does it because he thinks he needs to. Oh. <laughs> The music. I know it's coming as well. Yeah. <laughs> the man who starts wars, yeah. People he knows from the farm as well. Needs to keep his composure for this conversation. That scar, yeah, facing him with that scar. But it's also like, hey, you, you promised this guy a conversation with the king without my permission, you know? There was no guarantee of that. They're both so different now. But he doesn't doesn't for anything personal that's happened to him, but maybe does for the wars he's starting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, reveals that to all of the men. Oh, I don't think we've ever got his surname again. Calcifony. <laughs> yeah, everyone's shot, even I know. No, he's not the fourth in he knows. It's a different fourth in now, isn't it? Oh, okay, there we go. That's how long it's been. I mean, we all know that's not true. Yeah, he will need to bring in new men to use this land. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's something I has already lost. How can you call it a utopia if it's been built on this anyway? 
The king of the Vikings. Uh, there's some things he can't control. Is that the point he's making? He can't stop all suffering. He's not infinitely powerful. The king of rebellion is rebelling against God, okay? He can use their strength to his advantage, yeah. The only one capable of doing it. Fighting the will of God himself. The colours, the scenery. This episode as well, just phenomenal. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you just get killed by the men. He can have the wealth without all the destruction and death. When he opened his arm up, I thought it might have been both like giving him an opportunity to kill him. How do you solve everything through discussion if someone's only language is violence? Yeah, the only option he gives them is to kill him. Wow. Okay, so that was Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode 22. What an episode. We had I Have No Enemies. What a great moment. Um, you know, we start off everyone's cheering and counting along they're making their money placing their bets but once it gets you know past the 30s we've got that one big hit that um happened because Thorfinn was distracted by snake and Alma and that really put put him on his butt um knocked him over but he got back up and what a great moment saying to um the guy getting the name of, again Dolt um saying to Dolt, you know, hey, I'm still standing, don't cash out your bets now. And they keep going and you get that bit of a time skip and it's in, yeah, the 90s, no one's laughing anymore. They're all so serious, you know. They obviously didn't think he'd make it to this, but he did, partially because he knows how to take a punch, he knows how to roll with the punches. The, you know, the voiceover said, you know, he was like, using his hips, controlling his body in a way to minimise the impact. Of course, just with Dolt's huge, huge size and musculature, you're still going to take a ton of damage from it, and you're going to get one or two in there that you don't quite um, avoid perfectly. So, Thorfinn was real beat up. You know, you see how swollen he is. He's unrecognisable, really. His nose and his lips and his eyes, everything's just swollen. He took a lot of the punches straight to the face as well, didn't he? And I feel like a huge part of this is the music. Again, I've praised the music here so, so much. But again, it just amplifies every moment. It turns it up to 11, doesn't it? The emotional impact of none of you are my enemies, we only met today, what reason do I have to hate you? You guys, you know, the, the specific person you are fighting in a war isn't someone you hate, it's the people causing the war, and this is something I've tried to articulate before as well in my videos on the zone of interest and some of my other, you know, war film reviews um, about it being, you know, you're fighting on behalf of someone, you're fighting on behalf of a king. At least here back then, the king was fighting alongside you. Nowadays, you're fighting on behalf of a leader who isn't even fighting themselves. And you can be fighting because of their lack of negotiation skills, their lack of 
people skills, you know, or fighting on behalf of complexes that they have, pettiness and insecurities. They're the people you're fighting on behalf for. Um, you know, I said this before on Zone of Interest and it's kind of relevant again because Rishi Sunak, um, I'm filming, this will go out after the general election, but I'm filming this in June. So, you know, he's said that there's going to be a mandatory service and national service and it's not going to happen. He's just doing it for, you know, the news stories and to stay relevant. But it's, what do I have to fight for? Why would I fight on behalf of British Sunak of all people, you know? Someone who's A, unelected and B, He's not a man of the people, is he? The, the, the whole bloody, what have you given up? The sky cinema thing, you know? <laughs> it's just who you fight on behalf of. And like majority of wars nowadays are not wars of like necessity or like protection. It's not like someone's invading the UK right now. And that's why he's saying it. He's just saying it in general with the state of the world hopefully this doesn't get me assassinated but like someone like vladimir putin he just reads to me as someone who is deeply insecure everything he does is about um masculinity and strongness and you can see that and like obviously his and the country's views on like lgbtq people it's this insecurity about his own masculinity that's how i read him really the more you have to perform your masculinity the more insecure it makes you look and it's clearly leading from fear and from hatred rather than leading from kindness that for finn would try to do if he was a leader you know if he was a king and i do think there is some of what Knut says that is true as well. You know, it is not um, 100% black and white. It's he can only command so much. As he said, his point with the waves, he can't control everything. He is an all-powerful and can stop all violence. But what you need to do is cultivate a society, cultivate a culture that is anti-violence and also not passive because then it can be taken advantage of as well because if you have a society that is anti-violence like that or then you will you need to protect that because it can be taken advantage of from the inside or from the outside you know someone radical on the inside would take advantage of that passiveness and become totalitarian fascist you know th th this whole conflict the whole war at Catil's farm it is pointless as Forfin said you know it could have been settled by a game just a little game of something um there wasn't this need for bloodshed it's partially on Katil's um pettiness and Katil's insecurity and simply on the headspace Katil was in you know wars can be fought blood people can die because someone's in a bad headspace as simple as that and if Katil and Canute had discussed it more uh, like it feels like a solution is relatively easy there it's Katil was still in charge of the farm but not all of the wealth that comes from the farm is distributed straight to him which is like something I also believe in you know you should be taxed accordingly you should contribute to society accordingly as long as it's proportional Katil could have stayed head of the farm the resources there get pulled and then they get distributed out and it seems like actually a relatively easy solution to what's happening here but it's led to bloodshed if they had just like negotiated more there wasn't really any negotiation at all was there and it's you know the premise that the war or the battle is built on was false anyway it was all a setup the whole thing with Ulmer it's a battle built on nothing and I don't think there is like one solution especially if Canute wants to kind of be king of everything, king of the world. Can you you can't do that without suffering. Um, you're gonna have to conquest 
and instead of conquests, you know, maybe you can collaborate, share resources, uh, I guess, similar to like the EU or the UK, where I know England has a much better deal out of it than um, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. But the kind of collaboration there is like something to look to towards in on like a worldwide stage. And I know like although there is plenty of war and devastation happening in the world right now, this is still one of the most peaceful times in history. I guess that would be like the ultimate solution um, here w with these ideologies that the show brings up, like a kind of equivalent of a European Union for the entire world, because you can't have like one ruler rule over everything. It's far too much power because again, it would if the wrong person gets in, there'd be far too much power, but also just the sheer scale of everything to be able to control that much. I don't think that would happen. It would have to be smaller individual nations, individual states that collaborate together with multiple leaders because then you can oust a leader that is wrong, but also it's all built on trust and collaboration, which I think is where Canute is wrong in his ideology of course again here this is a completely different state of the world this is back in whenever it's set it's a completely different situation then than it is to now and i feel like with four fins i have no enemies ideology it's not completely passive you know, it's like pacifism, but it's not passive. It still requires being proactive and using your voice, not standing down. Um, it's still fighting, but it's fighting using your words. It's a um, Wayman Wang, isn't it? This is how you fight. This is how you can do it without perpetuating even more suffering and violence. But I think it is also contingent on the fact that everyone's acting in good faith and that isn't always what's happening. And maybe that's where this conflict between Katil and Forfin is coming from here. If every single world leader had that same ideology, it would all go fine, but it's the ones who don't that cause the problems. And I think, you know, with the I have no enemies, like personally, there's no one who's done something to me where I can say they are my enemy but there is through proxy if someone does something to someone I love then I have enemies through proxy through that you know I think there's very little someone could do to me personally that would make me hate them outright but it's when you harm the people I love through homophobia transphobia racism that's unacceptable. That's where I have enemies. I don't know how that applies with Forfin's ideology here. When they salted the land, when they destroyed his crops and he was holding back Ina, Forfin was completely calm there, but he was still holding back Ina. So he, he, like, he did start fighting. He was maybe angry on behalf of Ina, but I don't know. He was also holding him back, trying to hold him back. And we, it's the same with when he wanted to kill Katil after Katil had killed, he had fully murdered um, Arnheide as well. So he is trying to spread what he is saying to Ina there, but I don't know how that translates that idea of I don't have enemies, but my friends have enemies and they are my enemies too. Okay, so I think that's everything. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below. And if you really love this, be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date on all future uploads. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.